Well, good morning, everyone, and a very special welcome to First Sunday. Um, if you are new uh, today, if you're visiting, then uh, a very special welcome. My name is Mark. I'm the Families and Youth Minister here, and um, today it's our all-age celebration. So we're, there's no junior church. The children don't leave. Um, so we're all here together. So um, just a few notices for our reg regular members, or um, maybe if you're visiting, you fancy some of these. We've got um, a fairly normal week this week in terms of midweek church stuff. So we've got Fuel Youth Group. If you're a teenager in high school, if you're in high school, you can come to Fuel. So that's on Tuesday at the Vicarage. Um, if you've got a toddler or a baby, you can come to Titus and Toys on Wednesday morning here in church. Um, if, you, uh, if you're an adult, you can come to home group. If you'd like to join a home group, there's term cards at the back. Uh, see what we do. Come and chat to me uh, afterwards. Um, we have a special termly maintenance I've, I've got fun written by this as well. Fun, termly maintenance morning. You liked that, Fitty, didn't you? Yeah? On the 23rd of March. So um, there'll be lots of jobs for all abilities, all skills, all temperaments, and cake. Cake, good, yeah. Fun and cake maintenance morning. Brilliant. Okay, 23rd of March. Um, the electoral roll is now closed, but if you want to check your entry, then you can do so. And we're having our annual meetings after the service in a fortnight's time, okay? We've also, ooh, that sounded a bit weird. Um, someone's lost five pounds as well. So if you've lost five pounds, then please chat to Robert at any point, okay? If you've lost a fiver. Serial number required. You know, it's not like if you've lost a fiver 20 years ago, speak to Robert. It's, you know, if you've lost a fiver relatively recently. Um, okay. And another uh, exciting announcement is uh, Out With Dad. Out With Dad is for dads or granddads or uncles to bring the younger members of the family um, on Saturday the 9th of March here in church from 10 till 12. And this is what, this is where we do fun stuff. And this time we're making some of these. David has is, is kindly um, built this prototype. So we're making uh, catapults. Um, so there we go. Um, and we're going to have skill extra and things as well. And lots of, we'll have soft play and yeah. Again, you need a young child to, in order to qualify to come to that, and you need to be like, you know, a male member of the family. Out with that. There's flyers there. So to, take those um, and do pass them on if you think that others might be interested. Okay. If I've missed any notices, I'm sorry. That was quite a lot. Um, table activity discussion. Did anyone discuss these questions? Would you rather... Hands up, right? Would you rather make a phone call or send a text? Uh, hands up if you want to make a phone. You'd rather make a phone call? Yep. Hands up if you'd rather make a text. Send a text. No, most people, the phone call. Would you rather be able to talk with the animals or speak all foreign languages? So, chat to animals? Definitely. <laughs> speak all foreign languages? No. Um... Would you rather always say everything on your mind or never speak again? So, always say everything. I kind of do that anyway. Um, never speak again. Uh, not many for that one. Yeah, that would be quite, that would be pretty bad, wouldn't it? Okay, so hopefully you noticed that they're all sort of, we're talking about communication today, and today... We're starting our new series, our new First Sunday series on the Lord's Prayer. So we're thinking about simply how we talk to God, aren't we? We're talking to God. So that's our new series, so more on that later. Let's start our time together with uh, some intro praise. Thanks, Mike. 
Um, So if you would like to, this is Psalm 95, the the beginning of Psalm 95. So I'll read out the first line, and then if you would like to respond in bold, yeah? So let's, uh, let's start with the words from Psalm 95. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us come before Him with thanksgiving. For the Lord is the great God. In His hand are the depths of the earth. The sea is His, for He made it. Come, let us bow down in worship. For He is our God. Amen. Well, we're going to um, sing our first song, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Let's stand. Well, we're going to uh, spend a few moments now saying sorry to God, um, because we're not, we're not perfect in this body, are we? Um, as Christians, we are um, part of God's family, so we're safe and secure forever in Him, but it's good to say sorry. 
uh, just like if you're married and you don't empty the dishwasher or something much worse. Not that there is much worse in our household. <laughs> Doing wrong doesn't make you unmarried, does it? But um, it's good to uh, mend the relationship, to restore it. So let's say these words um, on the screen together. So we'll just have a moment of quiet, and then we'll say the words on the screen. So together. Dear Heavenly Father, we are sorry that we have sinned against you. We have said, thought, and done lots of things that are wrong. <clears throat> we have not done many of the good things we should have done. Thank you that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Please forgive us and help us to be more like Jesus every day. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent His Son into the world to save sinners, bring us His pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. Well, it's normally at this point we have a bit of a game or activity, and we have got a game. It's called Follow the Leader. So for Follow the Leader, I need, first of all, someone to guess, somewhat the guesser. And the guesser's job is to, firstly, they've got to go out through the, into the narthex, past the screens, so they, they, they can't see what's going on here. And then I sort of designate a leader and then what the leader, and then, then the, the guesser comes back in and stands in the middle here, yeah? And um, the leader then sort of does all sorts of actions, yeah? Like scratches their head, scratches their ear, touches their nose, scratches under their arm, all that, yeah? And your job, the congregation, if you want to play, there's no, you don't have to, but it'd be good, as many people join in as possible, is you've got to follow the leader. You've got to copy what the leader does. But you need to do it really subtly. You need to do it so that you don't give the game away and make the guesser's job really easy. Yeah? Does that make sense? No? <laughs> the guesser is trying to guess who the leader is. Yeah? And we've got to follow the leader, but without giving it away too easily. So, who wants to be the guesser? It's Luke, well done. Congratulations. Do you want to... Um, Robert, do you want to sort of just make sure Luke can't um, see, what or see what I'm sort of okay. doing? Luke, Luke, you just come out the back. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Brilliant. I'm not obviously going to sort of um, say who the leader is. I'm just going to point. So Luke is beyond visual range now. Okay, so hands up if you, would, you wouldn't mind being the leader for the whole congregation to copy. Okay. Well, I'm thinking, I'm just trying to think of position, okay? Don't mention their name, but this is the leader. Does the leader want to just stand up momentarily, please, and wave? Now, obviously, it's going to be a little bit tricky to see exactly what the leader is doing, so you're going to have to copy it. It'll be a bit of a ripple effect, I think. But let's start off with that. Okay, send them back in. Thank you, Robert. <clears throat> In the, in the middle here, in the middle, look. Well done, look the guesser. Right, you've got to find the leader. Who is everyone copying, look? So just take your time, have a good look around, and I think you get three guesses, but we're not going to bother too much about that. Oh, people stood up and sat down there. Oh. Don't give the game away, people. <laughs> no? 
Sorry. Caroline. <laughs> that was very impressive, Luke. Or it was a really bad job, Caroline. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, there we go. There's a fun game you can all play at home, can't, isn't there? Follow the leader. Send someone out of the room. Pick a leader. Get them to do funny, funny things, you know, um, and see if you can guess. Now, as I mentioned, we're starting this new series on the Lord's Prayer, and it's a, it's a bit of a bit of a, a weak link, but I wanted to make the point that we're sort of we act differently around other people. Okay, so we got Luke went out to be in secret there, and then he came back in, and then he was having to work out. What, who people were copying. Because we copy as humans, don't we? We copy what others are doing. And just before Jesus taught us how to pray in the Lord's Prayer, he, was, he gave some guidelines, he gave some do's and don'ts on prayer. Some of the don'ts that he gave was, don't be like the hypocrites. The word used was also used for actor. So don't be like those who put on a mask while praying, trying to impress others. You know, they would stand out in the streets and be quite dramatic in their prayers. Don't be like them, Jesus says. Don't stand in the streets and say long prayers with fancy words. Instead, go into your room in secret where your Father in heaven hears you. Talk to God yourself. Be yourself in the secret of your, you know, in your, in your own space. Don't be showy in front of others. Because when we do things in front of others, we can easily change to impress rather than focusing on what we're saying, can't we? We can change. We can do things because other people are around. So Jesus was warning about that. Um... And then he goes on to teach us how to pray in the Lord's Prayer. So we're going to read that now from Matthew chapter 6. You can follow along in a Bible if you want. Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 to 13. The words will be on the screen as well. So let me read these uh, words to us. Jesus speaking. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. Um, so very familiar words to many of us, aren't they? Um, we're going we're gonna to watch a video now. Uh, I, I grabbed this off. Uh, um, but uh, I, thought, I thought we'd like that. Okay, so let's, uh, before we think about the Lord's Prayer, um, let's sing again two songs. Um, God is our Father and Wide wide as the ocean. Now, I think there's some actions to wide as, wide as the ocean, but um, I can't quite remember. So anyway, so, so I, shouldn't, I shouldn't have mentioned that there was actions. Just ignore me, because you'll definitely get them wrong, okay? So let's stand and sing. When we sing, uh, God is our Father, which will be new to a lot of
Please sit down. Great. Thanks, Christine. Well, the Lord's Prayer, uh, we say it quite a lot if we're uh, regulars at church. Uh, We say it together most Sundays at church. And I would imagine many people who don't go to church will have heard this prayer quite a few times. They may have learned it when they were younger. I did. I said it most mornings in assemblies at school. My school had assemblies every day. Um, Or maybe someone's had a book like this. This is my dad's. This is a totally classic. To baby William R. Rosengrove. You can ask me about the surname later. With best wishes from the Young Wives Club at Davidson's Mains Church. And it's a lovely book on the Lord's Prayer. And this was printed in 1956. So... Maybe quite a lot of you have got one of these at home as well. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so it's, it's famous. It's so well known that we may say the words, but not really think about them deeply when we say them. But that wasn't the purpose of this prayer that Jesus taught. It wasn't the purpose. It wasn't just to be said without thought. It was designed for relationship. So after giving some do's and don'ts about prayer, about when to pray, and, uh, etc., Jesus gives his disciples and us a model of how to pray. And notice how he starts. Thanks, Mike. You might need to click again. Our Father in heaven. Our Father in in heaven. Jesus doesn't start with Lord Almighty in heaven, does he? Jesus doesn't start with Creator God in heaven. He doesn't begin his prayer with Yahweh in heaven. No, he starts with our Father Of course, God is the Lord Almighty, the Creator God, Yahweh. But at the same time, He is also, also, to those born of Him, Father. To those born of Him, Father. And we've been thinking about this in our series in John, haven't we? That we are all born of flesh all of us, but some are born of God, of the Spirit. If you are born of God, then you have God as Father too. John tells us in chapter 1 how people are born of God. You might remember this. I think we did this just before Christmas. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, He gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. And the one John was talking about, the one to believe in, was Jesus. Everyone who believes in Jesus, who trusts him as Savior, are born of God. They get God as daddy. So it's Christians who have God as father in heaven. Christians, those who have trusted in the life, death, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, come down from heaven to live a perfect life, to die on a cross in our place, take the just punishment for the sins that we've committed even though he was innocent, and then he died, and then he was raised, and he gives us hope for that future with God in heaven. So those who have put their trust in Jesus get to call God Father in heaven. So a question for us today 
Is God your Father in heaven? Is God your Father in heaven? Have you been born of God? Have you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to get you to heaven? If not, do come and chat um, if you would like to find out more. And we've also got a chance to think about it more at a Hope Explored course. There's some, some of these at the back. Do fill one in, scan the QR code to discover more about the hope that is found in Jesus, if this is news to you. So if God is your Father in heaven, then brilliant. If you're, if, if you're in the family, then great. But do we remember, do we remember as Christians that He is our Father in heaven when we pray to Him? Jesus is instructing those who trust in Him to pray to His Father, who is also our Father. So is this how we approach God, I wonder, as our Father in heaven? Or do we approach Him like He's someone or something else? Thanks, Mike. Next um, slide. And then the next one. Just a few pictures to think, help us think about maybe some views of God that some of us might have as we come to in prayer. Maybe we think God is some sort of cosmic policeman ready to sort of, you know, catch us when we do something wrong. Thanks, Mike. Maybe you think he's some sort of mean army instructor type character that's only there to discipline and uh, make us feel not that great. Maybe, uh, maybe you view him as some sort of vending machine. I haven't got Happy Vend here today. Happy Vend was a, a prop that I made a few years ago. He had to be dismantled because he was so big, but it was a big mock-up of a van vending machine. Maybe we view God as a bit of a vending machine. I'm going to pray to God because I need him to give me stuff. Maybe that's our view. Thanks, Mike. Maybe we just feel very, very distant. He's, he's miles, and, miles and miles away. That we can't actually approach him because he's too, he's too good and we're too bad. Maybe that's how we approach God in prayer. So I wonder if we have those kind of thoughts. What sort of a father is God like? Is he loving or critical? Is he demanding or accepting? Is he trying to take all the fun out of life or, it, or is he good? Do we approach God as father, the perfect father? No matter what we experience, what experience we've had with our earthly fathers, maybe some good, maybe some bad, God is the perfect father always loving, always caring, always fair, always just, always merciful, always compassionate. I like to think about the parable of the two lost sons. Remember that one? Remember that the younger son wanted his father's estate early, and uh, he said the father gave him the his share of the estate, and the younger son went off, and he blew the lot. And then one day, he came to his senses, and he returned to his father, and he'd prepared a sorry speech as well. But before the son could reach his father and say sorry, the father ran to his son, and he hugged him, and he put a ring on his finger, and he threw a massive party. Remember that? Here's a picture. Thanks, Mike. That's the kind of father we have in heaven. That's the kind of father we have in heaven. If we're Christians, that's our father. That's a picture right there in that little story. Our father in heaven. When we're on our own, in our homes, in the car, or out for a walk, let's remember to approach God in prayer as our Father in heaven. 
we can approach him with assurance and confidence. We don't need to fear. We're in the family. We're secure. He loves us, and he wants to hear our prayers. Amen. Well, we're going to continue in prayer, and um, Emma's going to bring around some paper, okay? So you will need a sheet of paper. You, can, you don't have to opt into this. You can sit quietly. Um, but I'll show you what we need to do. You take your sheet of paper when it arrives, and you fold it in half. So we're going for that, yeah? Nice and easy. This is not a hard one today. Some of you will be relieved to hear. Now I'm just going to draw, I'm just going to then draw my hand. Now what you want to do is you want to draw your hand around your hand and you want your hand to be on the fold. So the hand is close to the edge of the fold. Um, So it's folded. Your pinky, your pinky needs to be near the edge of the fold. And it's best if your hand is kind of closed-ish, your fingers together. Fingers together, not wide apart, because that might look a bit strange. Like mine's looking not that great now. Um, okay, so you're looking for something like that with it on the edge of the fold. And then we're going to cut it out. Make sure that you've got a bit of fold that you're not, you know, it needs to, it needs to be kind of joined up when you cut it out. So we're cutting it out. Here we go. Praying hands together, that's it. We're making praying hands together. Okay, so cut your hand out. See, I left my pinky kind of separate, so mine doesn't look as good. No comment, Jazz, thank you. Good, lots of cutting going on. Scissors. Okay, so you're kind of going for something like that, but you can make it better than that because I kind of messed my pinky up a bit. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I know it's not the best. Emma's pulling a face at me. How'd you get on, Fitty? Fine. I've rather a twisted index finger. Slightly, yes, yeah, slightly. <laughs> That's what happens when you get old. All right. <laughs> Belinda, nice one, yeah? Look at your long fingers. You'd be good at piano, wouldn't you? Um, wave your hands if you've, if you've done. Nice one, too. Okay, we're nearly there. Okay, so you should have some praying hands. Something like that, vaguely. Now, 
we'll just spend a moment letting people finish off. And also, if you would like to write a prayer inside your hands, so in this part, to your Father in heaven, maybe a, a prayer of thanks. Maybe you want to thank Him for someone or something. Maybe a, a prayer for help. Maybe you need some help with something. Or maybe you know someone who's ill. You could pray, pray for them. So anything you want, a prayer, a short one-line one prayer to your Father in heaven. And when you're done, you can close it up because it's your prayer. It's done in secret. And then we'll close together with the Lord's Prayer. So just a, a moment or two to think about our prayer to our Father in heaven. Okay. Well, whether you've got a, a written prayer inside or not, it's fine. God knows. God uh, hears our prayers, whether written down or just in our heads. But let's, um, let's hold up our hands. If you've made some hands, you can close them up. Hold them in your hands. And let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Thanks, Mike. And the next one, yeah, thanks. Okay. So let's say that prayer that Jesus taught us together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, we're going to sing our final song. Our God is a great big God. I do know the actions for this one, so do join in if you, if you wish. So let's stand.
Brilliant. Well done, everyone. Please do take a seat. And just uh, another uh, quick notice to say that um, the short PCC meeting happen happening after the service will happen at 10 past 11, okay? So 10 past 11 for the seat. In the vestry. In the vestry. Good. Um, but um, please do stay in chat. There's more refreshments, there's biscuits, tea and coffee on offer, and uh, do say hello. Uh, let's close with uh, a final prayer. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we thank you that we can call you Father through what the Lord Jesus has done. Thank you that he has brought us into your family. Please help us to grow in faith in what he has done. And uh, we thank you, Father, for this time as your family together. Grace, mercy, and peace will be with us from God the Father and from Jesus Christ, the Father's Son, in truth and love. Amen.